um, we're doing this. After Effects. Oh my, where do I actually start with this? Because After Effects is one of those programs that everybody wants to learn until they open it. Somebody brand new can open it for the very first time, take one long look at it, and then go and take a nap. And I know that because I was one of those people. However, I made a very serious commitment with myself and gave myself a promise that I would get better at learning this program. And since then, I think I have. I have used After Effects on countless projects. I've used it for client work for my own stuff. I've even used it for broadcast stuff as well. It is a very daunting app. And if you're watching this video, then you're more than likely looking to get into After Effects, but you have no idea where to start or what to do or what to watch or how to go about doing it. Well, Today is your lucky day because today I'm going to try and embark on teaching you guys how to use After Effects. At least an introduction to After Effects. I don't think either of us want to be here for an hour learning every single nitty gritty thing about the program. So we're going to cover some of the basics and give you guys a bit of an exercise. Today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to make this really cool text tracking effect that you can use inside of your YouTube videos. And this is just the tip of the iceberg, by the way, for the kind of stuff you can do in this program. But I thought we'd start off simple, introduce you guys in, ease it in and be gentle with you. And then maybe we'll do a part two if this video does well and you guys enjoy it. And if you do enjoy it, then be sure to give it a like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in the future. Shameless plug, but you know what? I'm a YouTuber, deal with it. Before we dive into our journey of exploring After Effects together, I wanna to give a huge thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Nerd or Die. If you guys are live streamers or content creators and you're looking for graphics that you can use inside of your live streams or your YouTube videos, then Nerd or Die is the place to go. Nerd or Die is trusted by over three million live streamers and content creators to provide them with high quality stream graphics and there's a reason why. All of the designs are super customizable so you can buy one of your favorites, for example, the iridescent pack that you're seeing on screen right Right now you can download it open it instead of after effects and tweak it to your heart's content you can tweak things like a dark mode a light mode version of the theme changing the colors you see on screen to have custom or baked in presets that they offer as well you can change the stickers age uh, bring your own logos there's so much you can do with this overlay along with many others on their website so with that it really is more than just an average template so feel free to pick up your own using the link down in the description below that link also helps support the channel as well by the way so thank Thank you for that and if you want to save 20% off your order make sure you use code sam at checkout Woo! and breathe <laughs> so with all that said and done let's uh, dive into after effects and start off with breaking down the interface for you guys so you feel a bit more comfortable navigating the program when you first load up after effects you'll be greeted by this large ominous window and this basically is the program and it's compromised and made up of several different panels the first one that you'll see in front of you is the composition panel the main viewing panel that will load up whatever it is you're animating you can play it back and view it here below the preview monitor inside of premiere or in final cut pro or in resolve this is the main screen where your composition will take life and to the left of that you will have the project panel and this is where you will basically organize all of the assets you need for your project where you're bringing your media your audio where your solids and nulls will be kept where your compositions will be stored this is the main organization place for your project at the top of the panel you'll see another tab which says effect controls this is like a contextual menu that will change depending on what you have selected and what is included in that particular layer you may have an effect on there like page curl or something like that and all the controls for that effect will appear here moving up to the very top of the program window you will see what's called the toolbar now this is kind of divided into two sections you'll have one side on the left hand side which is where all your tools are your mouse your masking tools your clone stamp your rotor brush your text tool all of that will be found here. On the right hand side, you'll have your presets for your workspaces. These are different appearance options for After Effects. You can change and modify and tweak them to get exactly what you're after within After Effects. I recommend experimenting with this to get exactly the kind of experience and workflow that you want to use when you're using the program. Moving on to the right hand side, you'll see a series of tabs or docks that are various different panels. These are closed panels. You can click on them and expand them to get a bit more information of what's going on. These are kind of custom and depending on the kind of what you're going to be doing, I recommend looking at what are these are and clearing this out and adding more if you need to but the main one i recommend keeping around is the effects and presets panel this panel will let you add effects and presets to different layers inside of your timeline as a search bar so you can find whatever effect you're looking for really really quickly so i recommend keeping that one open especially if you're doing a lot of effects work and you need to access those very quickly and finally the last window at the very 
very bottom of the screen is of course your timeline. I'm not going to go into much detail about this one because a timeline is pretty self-explanatory, but this is where you do all of your keyframe adjustments, you can play back different layers, you can adjust things and tweak things on your timeline. I'm pretty sure you guys know what that is about. And that is pretty much the basic interface for After Effects. There is plenty more panels and things you can add if you want to. So I recommend experimenting and playing around and finding what works best for you. Other than that, that's pretty much it when it comes to the UI. Let's jump in and talk about how we can make that text tracking feature that I showed you at the beginning of the video. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is bring the clip of this Boba Fett helmet that I have into After Effects. I'm going to click and I'm going to drag and import into the project panel inside of After Effects. The next Next thing we're going to do is create a brand new composition and we can do that in a couple of different ways. We can go to the very top, you'll see a composition menu item. You can click on that and then choose new composition. You can then either click on the composition window itself and actually select a new composition from there. Or you can click on this little button here at the bottom of the project panel and create a new composition that way as well. What we're going to do instead though is create a composition that is based on the clip settings that we have just brought in. So what we're going to do is click on our clip, drag it over the new composition button inside of the project panel and we're going to let go of the clip. What happens is After Effects is going to create a composition for us based on the clip settings that we've just used. So for example this clip was shot in 4k 30 frames per second and when I check the composition settings you can see it matches exactly the same settings as the clip. Once you've done that you'll now see your clip is on the timeline you can then scrub and play it back and preview it inside of the composition window. The next thing we're going to do is trim this project to the right size because the clip goes on for a bit too long and I want to shorten that down to just the right length for our title and you can do that in a couple of different ways you can click and drag and shorten the clip inside of the timeline by clicking on the edge and dragging it to the right length or you can do it a different way and this is the way that I usually do it just above the timeline you'll see a light gray bar which is bookended by two blue indicators this is your work area and you can adjust and tweak that by clicking and dragging it around the timeline. You can make it shorter or longer but that is what primarily After Effects will play back inside of your timeline. Think of it as an in and out marker if you're using Resolve or Premiere or Final Cut Pro. Once you click and drag and make those adjustments you'll see we have a lot of excess clip left over that we don't exactly need. The best way to clear that excess footage we don't need anymore is by right clicking on the grey area of the work area bar and then clicking trim comp to work area. And poof, just like that, you're now ready to move on to the more exciting part of the tutorial, and that is adding the text to this scene in 3D space. And the way we do that is by creating a 3D camera track of our footage and our scene so we can add the text in 3D space. That might have confused some of you, but uh, let me explain and show you guys how to do it. What you're gonna do is click on your footage inside of your timeline and go over to the tracker panel on the right hand side or wherever it is inside of After Effects for you. And you're gonna click on that and then choose track camera. It will then go through and analyze each and every single frame to determine what kind of movement took place inside of that scene. So depending on how long your footage is and what kind of resolution it was shot in, it may take a while to analyze the footage completely. So I'd highly recommend maybe go and take a break at this point, maybe go get a cup of coffee, watch a YouTube video, watch one of my YouTube videos. Can we click on one of these videos on the side that are mine or down below in the description or whatever? Do what suits you. And then once it's done analyzing, it will apply the effect to your footage and it will make it look as though there's loads of crosses and dots and squares on the screen. These are tracking points that After Effects has used to determine the movement of the scene and the camera and the things going on inside of it. With this information now, we're gonna select a couple of the tracking points. We're gonna right click and choose create text and camera. What this will do is it will create a text layer and a camera that moves with the movement of the scene and matches the movement exactly. And once it's done, it's now time to customize the text to get exactly what you want. I recommend tweaking the font and the size of this and playing around with how it looks on screen. What I did for mine was I adjusted the rotation by pressing R on the keyboard with the text layer selected and I can tweak and adjust how the text looks rotated in 3D space. And then once you've got one of these done, the only thing you need to do now is duplicate it and tweak that copy to make any necessary changes. And that's what I did. I made a copy of this by pressing Command or Control D on the keyboard or going to the edit menu and clicking duplicate and then adjusted this new copy of the text and tweaked it to get exactly what I was after. And then even animated these by fading them in. And what I did for that is I pressed T on the keyboard you know, T for opacity. I don't exactly know how that works. Maybe transparency. 
makes more sense that way. Anyway, pressing T on the keyboard brings up the transparency tool. And if you want to animate these, you can then click on the stopwatch to add a keyframe. Then by moving the playhead down in time just a little bit more, you can click on the small diamond icon to add a second keyframe. You can then go back to the starting keyframes and then bring down the intensity of the opacity to zero. And what that will do is over time as you watch it back, it will then fade the text in. You can then play around with where in time these keyframes take place. And I recommend doing it somewhere where it makes the most sense for your footage. And then just by simply doing that for both layers and then offsetting and adjusting the timing on the second layer or the subtitle text, I can create a nice staggered effect where the top text fades in and the subtitle fades in after it. And now if we play it all back, you can see our title is attached to our helmet or to the frame of the footage and it tracks along with the movement of the scene. And once you play it all back, you now have a finished title that you can use inside of your YouTube videos. And there you go. Wasn't that hard, was it? These little things really add the extra production value to your videos and really give it that polish that pushes your quality from around here to up here. And there you go, guys. That is your introduction to Adobe After Effects. If you guys want to see maybe a part two to this video, maybe more advanced tips and tricks of things you can do inside of this program, this is just the tip of the iceberg, then feel free to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel. Or if you have any questions you want to ask me in a more direct forum, like a one-on-one -on -one kind of thing, then feel free to jump into my Twitch chat every single Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. The link for my channel is down below in the description. I've also linked any other resources Source that I managed to find on After Effects down below as well. Some things like Video Copilot and Mount MoGraph. Great places to learn how to use After Effects. I've linked them down below as well. And on that note, guys, I'm going to leave you all and say good luck and have fun with After Effects. It's a big program to learn, but my goodness me, it is full of powerful things. With that, guys, I'll see you all in the next video. Take care.